This is part two of Leo Stedman's life. Uh, he was my grandfather, and if you didn't catch part one, you can find it in the playlist. This is a continuation of life before the Depression. So <laughs> my grandpa talks about uh, growing up at a time where they had like uh, one phone for the entire town and everybody split a line and how something like major like an airplane flying over would be a big deal because you're talking this is between um, about late 1910s to early 1920s and he talks about what life was like back then in high school and the kind of jobs he had and uh, it's really interesting as a snapshot of that time period so I hope you enjoy it, and as I said, I really love my pop. It was it's really fun to watch all this stuff, and I've put in old pictures where I I have them. Uh, I'm hoping they're accurate, but if you guys uh, watch this and I messed up a picture too, just just let me know in the comments. Okay, enjoy. Telephone. It was uh, a party line where you rang, and our ring I still remember. Two longs and two sharps. How many other people did you share the line? I don't know. There's all the farmers around there was on that line. Did they pick up and listen to your call? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they had, when you had emergency or anything, for general information, they had a general ring. A lot of sharp ring. Just continued. Everybody got on the line. And they'd say... Tornado. They'd give you whatever information they had. And sometimes it was social. And sometimes it was... Well, that's neat. This airplane coming over, everybody going outside and look at the airplane. Various <laughs> <laughs> uh, things. And, uh, Did they ever call you for a tornado? Huh? Did they ever call you for a tornado? That a tornado has been spotted? No, I don't remember whether they did or not. We had tornadoes. I remember one tornado came, we were, had to cellar every time a tornado would warning come, we all went to the cellar. And luck would have it, they, uh, Dad tore up our cellar and was cementing it, making a concrete cellar in the place where we could go. We kept all the fruit and things down there, and potatoes and things. And, but anyway, we, the thing was torn up, and one night the storm started. And it was a tornado coming. We had no place to go. <laughs> So we stayed the kids and we went back to bed and all the bed we had a big bay window in the front room. We blew that out. Dad put a Oh it came that close to your house. Put a cotton sack over it and we all went back to bed. The next morning we got up the barn about hundred yards away or yeah, about hundred yards away. It was gone. Wow. And one of the one of the chicken houses was gone. <laughs> we got uh, spared the house and us. Did you lose your animals and all that stuff? Your horses? Oh all yeah, the they, we found horses and ground. They were wow. some of them here injured. But so a tornado came within a hundred or so feet of you? Oh yeah. Wow. Did you ever see one? Did you I ever saw them come, yeah. We used to, you could look out and see them come. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? Oh yeah. They would stand outside the cellar and run down the cellar and they got too close but that was the only one that ever hit our place. What was the what was the very first time you ever saw an automobile? I don't really remember much but I remember our first one and that was just about the first one I can remember. It was an old Model T or A Ford brass radiator and all that. Dad had gotten the buggy and he had gone to town. And the horses ran away with him, pulled him over the buggy and uh, broke his shoulder, threw it out of place or something. He got mad and traded off the buggy and brought him. came back in that old Model T or A or whatever it was. And that was the first one. So none of you knew he was going to come back with a car, he just did. No. <laughs> and we, there wasn't many, about the only other person around there that had one was a, that we could see was the doctor. And we had, back in the old ruts in this road, you had ruts where they kept drawing, that was all. And you get those ruts, you couldn't get out of that car. 
and the people, some of the farmers would be jealous and they'd drive up and pull halfway out in their, in their wagon and buggy and <laughs> you'd be stuck there trying to get it. <laughs> but uh, that was the first car I remember. Did you all take rides in it? Huh? When you first got it, did you all take rides in it? Oh, I uh, would just... go to town once a, once a week and we went, always went to town, 10 miles. But how did you get gas? Oh, town. Gas. Ten miles. We were out. I mean, if you ran out, that would suck, man. We'd go to town. town. <laughs> us boys would hang around Mama. She would give us a dime apiece, and we'd go to the movie. And what did that, you watch? Uh, what kind of movies were pretty? Oh, movies? western. Not all. Were they silent? Silent? No. Hell, I was. 14 year old, I guess. We're talking about like 1924. So you're still on the farm now until you're age 12, you said. Yeah. What was your mother's day like on the farm? Well, she worked out in the field. She'd drive the teams, work in the fields. And, you know, and my, my first jobs as a little child, little, I was, must have been six or so. I was to cook the beans and things while they were out working. <laughs> I cleaned the kitchen. You actually did the cooking at six? Well, I cooked beans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a wooden stove. We didn't, we cooked on a wooden stove. Where'd you get your water and all that dry land? We had a uh, well, windmill. You guys dug your own well? Oh you yeah, we had a good well and good water and did a wooden pipe to the house. We had a, Buckets. How, how, did you do, how do you dig a well? They drill, you if you had a drill, come to this one was a oh, very deep someone. well. You didn't have any oil underground, did you? Uh -huh. You didn't have any oil underground, did you? No. <laughs> we would be here. We, we didn't know. Uh, Let's go back. We had a big, uh, <laughs> great big tank. It was up. We filled that. We had the tank for the cattle out there in the yard, cattle yard. And then we had a milk house where the cold water ran through the concrete blocks. And that's where we kept the milk and the cream as cool as it could get. You didn't have an ice box at all? No, no such a thing. The only time we had ice, we would buy some and get to town and come home and chip it up and make ice cream. And cream. it was made with cream, not milk. Ice was it good? <laughs> was it good, Leo? Uh, was it good? Oh, yeah, it was good if you could stand in the richness. <laughs> did you, what time did you get up and go to bed? We got up damn early, I know. <laughs> this is daylight. Got up around daylight and went to bed about dark. Leo, uh, since uh, none of us here have ever met your, your uh, mother, and uh, the boys haven't met your father, how would you describe each of them in terms of their strengths, their weaknesses, the things you liked, the things you disliked? What? How would you describe your mom, since we've never met her? They're her strengths, her weaknesses, what was good about her, what you didn't like, and the same thing for your dad. Well, I couldn't find much wrong with either one of them. They were always good to us, it was fair. We never, we never questioned, we had to do work. We would never question because that was something that was done. And uh, my biggest deterrent for getting into meanness or honorness, trouble, even through high school, was it wasn't what I would get caught or what I would get punished. It would be because I would hurt my parent, my mother, and father, that they would feel bad. That was my biggest deterrent. Now I don't know why, but that was that was the way it was. But their law, I never questioned them. I never questioned them. They weren't strict. They were very liberal with us and uh, so they were good people they were good people they were hard workers we knew they were and they expected us to work now did you have did you were your granddad and grandmother around when you were growing up oh yes what, what were they like well my gra I don't know much about my grandfather he died when I was very young I mean, uh, on the Stedman grandfather. And my Stedman grandmother, she lived into the 80s. And she, she was very active. I didn't know her too well. My 
mother's side, the grandfather and grandma of Jeffrey, they lived in the town where we did, where we went to town. And they they ran a bottling plant there, and we'd always go bring back a case of bot pop every time we went. <laughs> what, what kind of soda? Oh, just in general. It wasn't a Coke or anything like that. that it was wasn't a, Dr. Pepper? No, they didn't even have Dr. Pepper then, I don't think. For some reason, I thought it might have been Dr. Pepper. Oh, we, my dad, uh, later on. Ah. But uh, anyway, we went, we got my older brother, he got finished school, finished the little school there. And How old was he at that time, Pop? Huh? How old was your older brother when he finished school? He was five years older than I was. Wow. So, or four years older. So that means he was 16. So anyway, he, he completed school and he drove a, rode a horse over to Alfalfa, Oklahoma then to go to another school, but he finally, he didn't want to go to school, so he quit. And when I got old and graduated from the <laughs> sixth grade, my mother and dad decided uh, they wanted to send me to school, so we, they sold the farm and we went to Grandfield, Oklahoma and opened a bottling plant. And we started out a bottling plant. You, you used to raise chinchillas, correct? Huh? You used to raise chinchillas, correct? Yeah, was that, that was farm? later on. Was later on. Okay. But uh, we ran the bottling plant and I went to high school there. I started junior high, or I guess the junior high, the eighth grade. So your, par your parents thought education was very important. More yeah. important than working on the farm? Yeah, I went, uh, we went to the farm, the school on the farm was a little one room schoolhouse. But was was the priority to work on the farm or to go to school for the children? Oh, you worked on the farm. Your priority worked, but you went to school. They took the school, the work on the farm didn't interfere much with my school. Okay. But we went to school. And uh, we got to Grandfield. Uh, my older brother and I, my dad, we ran the bottling plant as a little one horse thing. We started delivering pop locally and then we branched out to the other small towns. What made you guys move to Grandfield? Why Grandfield? Well, that was where, I don't know why I decided on that, but there was a bottling plant there for, for sale. And we decided since my granddad owned the plant, my dad decided he'd plant. So we bought, my dad bought a truck and we started going out to, but anyway, as we worked <coughs> there too, we worked. We did all the work that was to be done in the bottling plant. In the summer it was rugged. Winter we didn't have much to do. <coughs> well, did, how did they sell the soda in the uh, winter? Didn't well, sell it at all? Sold. It, didn't, it sold, but I mean, it was... You didn't sell as much. Didn't sell as much. But in the summer, it was a night and day job. We worked. And was it a good business? Did they make yeah, money? Yeah, it was pretty good business. But it was... It, after... After my brother, he finally left town, left home and went to work in the oil fields up in Oklahoma City. And then when I graduated from high school, I wanted to go to college. My parents wanted me to go to college. But I didn't, <clears throat> we just didn't have the money. Well, but uh, they worked up, saved up, because by that time the business was just, wasn't making money. Worked up $25. That was the tuition for a semester at a Oklahoma A&M College. And Let's go back and get high school before yeah. you tell us about college. Because high school is where a lot of stuff happens. Well, <laughs> well, I went to high school. I had the usual things in high school. I was president of my class and 
as a freshman, and I was president each week, each year up through senior <coughs> year. I took the usual courses, everything except foreign language, which I was sorry I didn't take later. But uh, we got the basic education in a little high school. We only had, I think, it's 500 people in high school. I'd be that's a lot, yeah. That's yeah, but you had a, you you did a lot of sports there, didn't you? Well, I was played basketball and track, football. I went out one year. I made the team, but just when football season started, why the bowling plant started, and I didn't have time. Well, I played one game. I played <laughs> guard of all things. Guard. <laughs> a hundred and thirty pound guard. <laughs> but. I made the team, but I couldn't play because I had to stop and go to work. Again, I didn't question it. That was the job we had to do. And I had my usual good times. We had our parties. We didn't have much going on there. We had one theater. Was, was alcohol legal on? Or no, it, it was dry steak. Were you drinking moonshine? Well, you could got moonshine. Uh, <laughs> did you? Uh, Did you get moonshine? Not me. We uh, didn't. Come on now. Uh, come on now. <laughs> 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 we just did the, the high school kids just didn't drink. It wasn't. It just wasn't done. Some of the old farm boys that didn't go to school, they'd go out and very few of them smoked. They. Some of them did, but my biggest deterrent from smoking was it was supposed to be hard on you, your wind. And I was racked up in athletics, so I never smoked all during high school. But anyway, I went. To, I got got that twenty-five dollars. What, 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 what about girlfriends? Yeah, you skipping a big part here. <laughs> cool. Who's the first girlfriend? My first girlfriend was a. Really, a real girlfriend. A date when I really cared for was her girl that lived in Ryan, Oklahoma. I met her when we played Ryan on basketball, and we rode each other. And once in a while, I could get a chance to go over and see her, but that went on all through high school. What, what was her name? Do you remember? Alpha, Alpha, Alpha Reed. Uh huh. And uh, got some weird name people in that state. <laughs> well, it's Oma and there's Alta. And, yeah, yeah, whatever. Oprah came from that state. <laughs> and she, uh, she was one quarter Indian. Uh huh. But she was, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a beautiful girl. She was uh, football queen in Ryan. Was very popular. Now, Leo, you knew an Alta later in life. Is that the same? Yeah. Way? Well, after I. Then through when I went I went up went to school and college one one semester is all I got through. Mm -hmm. When that twenty five dollars was gone and I went, got a, up there I got a job, worked my board room. Played basketball too, didn't you? For the not college. college. Not you college. Track. Oh, I played basketball in high school. Yeah. And <clears throat> tell us about that. Well, we yep. just had a Ordinary team wasn't very good. We didn't win much. We didn't lose them all. But <laughs> yeah, but didn't you go on a state championship or something? The girls' team. I coached. I coached a girls' team. We had some good old country girls there that uh, we coached. We went, we went to the state and they won the state championship. But the boys' team, we never did do too much. We, When did you wrestle? That was in college. So what, what sports did you play in college then? No, just wrestling. I went out for the team, and I wasn't there long enough to do much. But I was <clears throat> the coach, probably the most famous wrestling coach in college ever was, was E.C. Gallagher. At that time, the only way Oklahoma A&M could make a the headlines in sports was from to lose a match in wrestling, which they never did. There at one year, 
they had four AAU champions on the team. Wow. But he was a good coach. And I was on the freshman team. I wrestled in the freshman team. But that was the extent of my college career. I came back, I got a job, worked a year. Were you disappointed that you couldn't go on because there was no oh, money? Yeah, I, I, but I, when come to the end of the year, end of the semester, I didn't have any money. I didn't have any clothes. My parents, but by that time, us two boys gone, the business had just shot. I mean, they didn't have, you couldn't hire anybody to do it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll continue to check out the next one. Hopefully I have part three up somewhere around here. Part three is coming up in a little bit. If it's not up yet, then uh, just check back later. So keep watching. Thanks.